This week we're talking about shimming your gnu. Did I really just do that? Love the intro. I'm just going to start off by saying that this was actually a subscriber requested video. And if you, yes you, the person watching this, has uh, anything they would like me to cover in a video, drop a comment down below or send me a message on the Facebook page. Uh, and if I can, I would love to talk about it. After all, that's why I do these videos. I'm just trying to share the knowledge I have with you guys to help the sport in general. So, without further ado, let's cover it. Perfidious Puffin. Perfidious. Perfidious. Perfidious Puffin uh, messaged, well, put a comment on the last video uh, asking about a shimming video uh, because uh, he's been trying to learn teching by building his own gun from scratch. And uh, he was having issues, and I tried to help him. Anyway, it turned out that we couldn't quite figure it out, and I realised he's quite local to me, so I, I offered to meet up with him and. Uh, give him a hand. And here is the gun he's building. This is a ANK SR25. Yeah, originally I was going to make a video going over this, figuring out what was wrong with it, but it turned out to be just the piston was at the rear and the MOSFET wasn't like any amount of current draw. The motor tried to draw at the start. So that's all good. And actually, I had a quick look. The shimming in this is pretty much spot on. Shimming is the act of adding little shims around the gear axles to nudge them up and down slightly within the gearbox to uh, help align them so that they mesh nicely both with each other and the piston and the motor. And the point of shimming is to try and get them to mesh nicely and make parts that shouldn't be rubbing not rub. It helps improve the efficiency of your gun because there is less friction, therefore there is less wasted energy, therefore your battery will last longer as it's using less power to overcome that friction. It will also help improve the longevity of the parts. Again, they're only meshing where they should be meshing and there isn't parts that shouldn't be rubbing together, rubbing together, so uh, less parts getting worn down. You can alter the sound your gun makes, uh, and uh, it should make it sound nicer, less grindy. It can, in some cases, slightly boost your rate of fire, although that's not necessarily why people shim. Now the technique I'm going to go over today doesn't just apply to V2s, you can use it for any gearbox really, it's just a case of following through the steps to try and get the gears to mesh nicely together. And I will say that there, there's no real right way to shim a gearbox, but there are wrong ways to shim a gearbox. Uh, so this is just my way of doing it. It seems to work for me, uh, and has worked for me for at least five years now. So uh, without further ado, let's crack on. So here it is. Here is the uh, V2 gearbox out of my um, G and G MP5, and well, it's just a basic V2 gearbox. So we're going to be using the rocket shims. Um, it doesn't really matter what shims you use; they all do the same job. You can get different packs with different thicknesses in. This is going to be a mix of thicknesses, which is good. You do want a couple of different thicknesses so you can uh, vary them. Mainly, if you've got a shim a lot. If you've got a lot of wobble, you can put bigger shims in, and then if you just need to fine tweak it, you can use the thinner shims to do that. Right, so that's the gearbox open. So let's quickly run through it. You've got your bevel gear. You've got an anti-reversal latch. These are your compression parts. We're not worrying about these today. Put those to one side. You've got your sector gear. And you've got your spur gear. So the process of shimming is, well, you put the gear in, and I'm doing this without any shims on, but effectively you put your gear into your gearbox casing, and initially you can just hold it closed with no, uh, with no screws in, 
but you will need to do some screwing in a bit and just see if there's much play in the gear of which there is I mean, you see this gear in here has tons of play that's probably two mil of play hopefully we should see some shims of different thicknesses in that so as far as I can tell, the silver ones I've got here are 0.2mm thick and the kind of copper looking ones, brass looking ones are 0.1mm thick. So what I'm going to do is start off by using the 0.2s because I know there's a lot of play in it and we'll work our way up and then once we get close to being there we will start switching out 0.2s to so pairs of 0 0.1 so we can move them around and get it perfectly in line. We'll start off with one shim on each side of the gear. And initially, we're just going to hand hold it closed. And then we're going to grab a pointy stick and see how much play we got. Easily, still a mill of play there. So we'll do the same thing again. Now, I could add them on both sides, but for speed you can just add them on the top and then move them around afterwards. So again, I've closed it up. I'm just hand holding it closed at the moment. Now, that's getting quite tight in there. I really clamped down, there's not all that much play. That seems a bit too tight. So I'm going to take that last 0.2mm shim off and put a brass one on, so that's 0.1mm. And see how that goes. So again, I'm just holding it tight. That seems to have a bit more freedom to spin, not too much play in it, so that's looking good. Now, you can't just hold the case closed because your hands aren't putting the same types of pressure on that your screws will be putting it on. So we're gonna put in these three screws, which are the three screws that are around the, um, around the gear parts. We're going to tighten those down as if we're putting the gun back together properly. That seems to spin quite well, although it does feel a wee bit tight. But that might be it rubbing on the bottom. So what I'm going to do... So we're going to take that brass washer there and put it on there. Right, so there's not too much play in that gear. That's good. And it happily spins, which is what we were looking for. So we know we need at least 0.3 mil on the bottom of it to shift it up enough. So normally when you're doing this, you will use the motor grip or, or yeah, the motor grip that uh, that goes with the gun. So really I should be using the MP5 lower. But if I put the gearbox in there, you can see it hides the gears pretty well so it's kind of hard for me to show you what's going on I mean you can as a person you can look and see how the meshing is going but it's quite hard to show on camera so for this case we're going to be using an M4 pistol grip that I have uh, which is quite handy um, just so you can see be able to show you how how the meshing should go um, People with like AKs and V3 gearboxes, you're set because you actually have a motor cage that mounts to the gun and that makes it a lot easier to figure it out. Same with things like SA80s um, and M14s. Um, I, I can't think of many guns that have floating motors like this. It, it's basically V2 gearboxes that, that have that style of, of grip. Right, so I've attached the uh, pistol grip to the gearbox shell um, and I've put our bevel gear in. I've got a motor in there and I'm just going to put the motor cap on. Now normally you would tighten this down, but I appear to be missing the two bolts for this motor cap. You big daft cock. What you're looking to do is look into this gap here and make sure that your bevel 
and pinion gear are meshing well, which they appear to do, and then you're looking to see that your bevel gear isn't able to twist at all without rubbing or without trying to turn the pinion gear, which this one is. And most importantly, you want to make sure that your pinion gear and your bevel gear are not going to rub on the anti reversal latch against the top of the pinion. It may work perfectly well outside of the gun, but in, especially in the case of M4s and well AR rifles, if you then put this onto your uh, once you reinstall this into your um, receivers, the uh, pistol grip might not go into exactly the same place and alignment with the gearbox, so everything will be slightly off. So you will still have to adjust your motor height at the end. Spur gear. Exactly the same process as before um, with the uh, bevel gear. We are going to start off by just shimming this so it fits and spins in the case freely. So I'm going to speed through that. One thing to note, there isn't really any great access to test and spin it, but you can come in through where the cylinder normally sits and flick it. Right, a word of caution to everyone, as just happened there. When you open up the gearbox, some of the shims may stay stuck to the other side of the gearbox, so always double check straight away and make sure they're in back in place. So what we're aiming to do is shim these so that they mesh with as much tooth to tooth, tooth contact as possible, but trying to minimise the amount of contact between the uh, face of the gear along the teeth edge here and the tops of and the tops of the anti-reversal tops of the anti-reversal latch there and you can see if that they're not they're not shimmed properly because you'll see patterns in the grease of your gear grease on the gear here if these have been rubbing so let's put these back in the uh, gearbox case and see how they look. Again, in this gearbox, we've got this lovely little window to look through here. But you've also got points like through your motor motor hole and also looking down through where your cylinder is. Hmm. As you see the spur gear is sitting a bit high compared to the bevel gear, so what we're going to do is move some shims onto the top of the, what is the top of the gear in this orientation, and this should help shim it down. So we're going to move, I'm going to start, I'm going to go bold and move 0.4 mil across, and leave just one single point two on the bottom of the gear and that to me is already looking a bit better although I feel like that might be too low now best way to tell is let's put it together just finger holding it and I'm going to try and spin the gear and see how it sounds try doing it this way around I think it might be rubbing, so I'm just going to put the gear off. I'm going to move a single one back up. Not one of the case. So we now have 0.4 mil on this side and 0.6 on this side. Does it? Sound too grindy, which is good. So let's chuck the screws back in and uh, see if I can spin it up. Okay, so that sounds a bit grindy. Now, one of the things I do when I'm checking my gears is I make sure I check them at various different angles. So, because uh, obviously no shimming's perfect, so there will be a slight amount of movement. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like those are going to be rubbing slightly. So what I'm going to do is pop this open, switch out one of those 0.2s for 2.1s. And there we go. That should be now quite nice and snug in there. So what I've done is switched out one of the 0.2mm shims for 2.1mm shims. And then split them, one on each side. And hopefully that should give us quite a nice... Quite a nice little mesh. Hmm, interesting. Yep, that's sounding good. Just do the final check. Right, so I've spun that and I've done it at several different angles and it all sounds good. So those two are now shimmed nicely together. So, uh, pro tip, if you uh, want to make sure that your shims that you're using stay on the gears while they're uh, out, is just grab a bit of like uh, thick silicon grease, which I don't have to hand at the moment, or some sort of thick gun grease here, and just dab a bit on each end and that'll just kind of stop them sliding off as easily. I mean, it won't hold them there permanently, but it will definitely help in this process. We're going to repeat the steps again for the sector gear and get this shimmed up nicely with the gearbox. So again, let's... That gear now has one, two, three, four... That's four point twos and one point one on it. So that's 0.9 mil shimming. As before, we're going to reintroduce the previous gear, which in this case is the spur gear. Now we're going to adjust the shimming again to make sure that these mesh nicely, but nothing rubs. So with these gears, we're looking to mesh these sets of teeth together nicely. But we don't want these faces rubbing together like this. So we don't want this wide face here rubbing against this wide face here. So we want them to sit just ever so slightly apart like that. So let's do that. And that's sitting too low. So we've moved the 0.1mm shims, so that should lift it up slightly. And that looks like it might just do it. So let's uh, pop it together. We're not going to put the screws in yet. So you can hear that knocking. That's a bit too low. So that knocking is caused by as the sector gear comes back, it is clipping against these teeth and popping up. So we're getting that knocking there. So that means we need to add more shims to the bottom. So I've moved a 0.2 shim across, and now, at least under hand tension, that seems to be running fairly well. So I don't know if you can hear that, but the gears are running happily in there. No matter what angle I hold them at, they seem to run fine. No grinding noises. Most of the noise you can actually hear will be the the motor uh, gear shaft rubbing in the bed, bushings a bit. You can quiet that down by uh, making sure those are thoroughly greased before final reassembly to help with that. So, final test. Let's put the bevel gear back in. And then test all three gears together. And lo and behold, the gears seem to run fine. And that is that. That is your gear shimmed. So, uh, hopefully that's helped. Oh, and notice I haven't shown you any videos of me shooting it. 
and being like, oh, listen to the sound difference. The reason for that is camera mics will just peek out when you run cycle a gun and you're not really going to hear the difference. But you should hear manually, audibly, analog style with Mark 1 ears, you should be able to hear a significant difference between a well shimmed gun and a not well shimmed gun because you should be getting much nicer meshing and you shouldn't be getting a, a grinding sound. And speaking of grinding sounds, that's how you adjust your motor. Um, you've got a rough height set from from the process. However, not all guns lend themselves to be easily uh, able to shim that way, like an MP5, because it's hard to see in there. Um, and you will need to fine tune it. So the way I fine tune guns uh, when I've when I've shimmed them is put it into semi-auto, fire a shot, listen to it. Wind it in a quarter of a turn, fire a shot, listen to it. Wind it in a quarter of a shirt, turn, fire a shot, listen to it. And if that gets worse, then I will wind back and then start winding back quarters of turns to try and find a sweet spot. And you'll, you'll hear it. You'll go go from a screechy, grindy sound and then it'll, it'll start getting a bit smoother. It'll get smooth and then it'll start getting screechy again. And then you just back it off until you find that kind of smooth point where it, it just sounds... You just get your kind of... Th -bump. For bump, and you don't get the kind of eh, bump, eh, bump, which is it grinding away. And once you find that, that is it done. That is you shimmed. So I hope you found this video useful, and I hope it's helped you either understand how to do it or understand what the tech is doing when they say they're gonna shim your gearbox for you. Um, because a lot of techs will just throw words out there like I'm gonna shim it, I'm gonna hop, R hop it going to reseal it all, give it a general service. Now that hopefully will help you understand what's going on. If you like this video, drop a like and maybe a comment down below. If you've got a video idea that you would like me to look into, or a, a topic you'd like me to look into, again, let me know and I'll be more than happy to try and check it out for you. Um, please, a subscription would mean the world to me. I, I'm i doing this all to try and help you, and the more of you that subscribe, the more you can see what's going on and follow all the stupid projects I'm doing or the tips and tricks that I'm giving out. So, I'll see you guys in the next one.